Hello everyone. Welcome to another or welcome to a uh, PlayStation review where we will be doing a flashback to the PS1 days first. But when we um get we'll be going like to PS2 and PS3 and then it won't become really a flashback anymore, but that's for another time. I'm Wyatt. You can call me And we're going to be doing a familiar series. Hold on a second. That's better. Now, I'm going to show you guys the opening cutscene so we can get to the plot. Just hold on a second. As you can see, this game looks okay for the time. This is 1996. There we go, it's loading. Yeah, so, as you can see, Dr. Neocortex, the main villain of the Crash series, he wants to capture, well, he captured Crash and, his, and Clara, and wants to use them to, for world domination, except he's pretty much rejected, as seen earlier. <laughs> it's pretty funny, actually. This is my current file, but I'm just going to go back to the earlier parts of the game. As this review goes on, I will... First, I'm going to show off the first level, Sandy Beach. So you can see an idea of the gameplay. My, what I like about Crash Bandicoot, as a whole, I like the graphics, even for the time. Like, of course, they don't look good now, because look at the PlayStation 4. It's a lot younger, and they've had more time, like... And those power-ups that I just got are called Uka Ukas, because Crash usually only takes one hit, but with an Uka Uka, he takes, like, another hit or two, and then he loses to Uka Uka, and then he's back to his normal one-hit gameplay. As you can see, already, this game likes to have bottomless pits. Don't worry, that's just usually... That's usually the game's design, but then the game even gets more. If you thought that was bad, just wait until... later on. So the good things about Crash Bandicoot, I like the idea of the story, and I like how you have to go through these three gigantic worlds as Crash and some nice 3D plat- fresh 3D platforming. If you get like two Uka Ukas, Crash gets a lot faster. And then he'll also like, really, I have no idea what the Uka Uka just said, but whatever. I'm gonna show you some death routes. These are basically ways that you'll probably get yourself killed doing. Like that. <laughs> I'm not trying again, sorry. I always have to try the death route in this level. And if you get like two enemies in one attack, you'll also get a fruit. The fruits give crash. Well, they only give him a one up once you get a hundred. Oh, come on. I'm not doing too well. Alright, let's just keep going. So, overall, Crash Bandicoot as a whole is a really fun game. But do I have any problems with it? The camera angles. I'm gonna show you a level. 
in just a second, once I finish this one. So I want to just show you like, the main things. You're supposed to hold the box as you can, so you can get as many fruits as you can, to get as many lives as you can. As you can see, I just picked up like 30 fruits. The more boxes you hit, the better. You're supposed to hit every single box in every single level. So you can get like a, a extra boss fight with Dr. Neocortex at the end of the game. But it's not really a biggie. No. This game also is very annoying with its trial and error. The music can be a bit repetitive, but that's about it. The backgrounds may be a bit, but the controls for Crash aren't that good. Well, they're okay, but Crash feels like you're trying to carry about two basketballs in one hand, and then trying to carry two in the other sometimes. Like, he just feels heavy. Way heavier than needed. But this game is very generous with its free men, so you probably won't get a game over. As I said, this game loves bottomless pits, and when you play this on your first try, you're probably going to be go do going through a lot of trial and error, because you're going to be like frustrated on how, how this game has like so many hurdles to jump over, and how there's just so many bottomless pits that you may not notice until the last possible second, but by that time it's too late. Or you won't, may or you might jump just an inch too early and fall. So then you'll get frustrated. But for the PS One, this was a great game. It was one of Sony. It was like a Sony mascot. But ever since Crash Bandicoot left the scene for Sony, we've never really been able to know a mascot. They've tried numerous people. They've tried Sly Cooper. We all know about Crash Bandicoot, as I'm reviewing right here. They've tried. Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank was like a huge PS3 mascot. So that's really all my flaws with Crash Bandicoot. The good thing, the story, the worlds, level design is really good. The level design is actually really good. And overall the experience is really fun. And I like how your platforming skills will be put to the test in this level. Now watch this level, this is a really good level, and one of my favorites. We have to ride a hog. No, you can't do this in any other part of the game, I'm pretty sure. But this game, this really, the controls are really weird, awkward. But, okay, I found I get, I got used to them. And there's actually a big pattern here, if you just keep going, like, right then left with the peep, with the door looking people, with the shields. Go right. It's like right, left, right, left. Right, left. See? Right. Jump. See, once you get this rhythm, it's actually pretty hard to die here. I actually always just go walking with this one. And then I jump over the next one. Jump over this one. And this is the one's really tough because you're supposed to stay to the right. As you saw there. And that you'll that might get you stumped. But it shouldn't. Because there's if you follow that pattern you'll be just fine. I'm also going to show off a boss fight called Ripper Roo. Before and I'm gonna talk more about Crash Bandicoot. Now we all know about the original trilogy on the PlayStation, although Crash Bandicoot worked was where the series, I think, really took off, but that's like when the series started to end for Naughty Dog. Naughty Dog's never been big on milking a franchise. We all know that. I'm, I'm pretty sure the last one, I'm, everyone thinks Uncharted 4 is the last one, and it probably is too. This boss fight has a pretty simple game. You're only supposed to hit Ripper Roo three times, just don't fall in the water. Use the TNT to your advantage. Oh no. As you can see, I'm not that good at Crash Bandicoot, but who cares? The strategy you want to use here, just find TNT. The only way Ripper Roo can really damage you is when you're on the same platform as him, and he just jumps on it. So 
Sometimes this gets really intense though because you might be nervous that you're gonna miss a jump. Like that, but see? He's a pretty easy boss fight. It's just easy to screw up one little thing. This game does have a lot of loading times, as you can see, but they're not long, long, long. Like, I've met games that came out after this that are even worse. Now, if you want to see where the platforming skills will be tested, try and do this level on your first try, Native Fort Fortress. It's the last level in the first world. You always want to, like, press X here so you can get more air time. And y'all, I've never been able to get that Uka Uka. Just saying. The enemies can be so cheap in this level. You just want to pull your hair out. Like, especially if you don't have that many lives, because... And plus, there's all this stuff that's in your way. Like enemies, then you'll see like a trap. But then here's actually the easiest part, but then it's also frustrating because you gotta jump and use it, use your attack. And you can't fall or else, like, in a certain amount of time, the platform will just go back to where it originally was. Now, would I recommend Crash Bandicoot? I definitely would. But I think that I would, I think that it would have been cool if Sony held on to Crash. Well, I think it would have been nice to see how Crash's future would have been because then Crash was, I think, gave a bad, just gave a bad name with all the other developers that took over. And there hasn't been a Crash game since 2010, as of July 2014, which was Crash Nitro Kart 2 for mobile phones. Like really, there was the first Crash Nitro Kart. I never played it. I just missed the free man. That's really all my problems I have with Crash Bandicoot, but I think that one thing it could have done better was if they should have made the opening cutscene mandatory to see. Like, you know, I shouldn't have to be waiting to find out the story. But the platforming's really good. Sometimes there's a bit of difficulty. Like, there's sometimes there's difficulty jumps, like big ones. Like in World 2, you don't really expect it that much. This is where the difficulty jumps really start to begin, is at the end of the first world. Like, some of those will just be a lot easy, and then some just won't be. If you hit the T, you have three seconds to get away before it explodes, or else it'll probably take you away. But, if you're wondering how many, how much, what the live maximum is in Crash Bandicoot, I, I don't know. I've seen, I've gone to 22 lives before, but that's about it. Like, those shield, shield people, they can really get on your nerves. Sometimes it's just plain unfair. Like, you see this. Watch this monkey. I don't even. I don't, I don't even remember him. So then he'll kill you because Crash only takes one hit. I don't like trial and errors because I don't want. Like, if I get a game over, I have to go back to my last save point. If I never save my game, I gotta start all over again. And that'll just really get on your nerves. Like, let's say I spent an hour playing it, then I'd have to spend another hour trying to get it all back. Like, it's... it's monotony. So, Crash Bandicoot... the Uka Uka is probably gonna be your best friend later on in this game, if you can find any. Believe me. Especially when you get later in World 2. You will just be like, thank you, Uka Ukas. So, uh, the next review will be Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back, then we'll be doing Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, later.
my final words for Crash Bandicoot 1. I really like it. I thought it was a great set, and it really set the way, I think, for its sequels. And I just, it's not like another just mediocre, lame platformer. It stands out. And that's the whole point. And that's why you want it to stand out. I like, see, this is where I wanted to show you guys how hard the platforming can really get on your first try. But I still die from it. So, I think that Crash Bandicoot's definitely one of the best games on the PlayStation, and a really good platformer. And it's not just like mediocre good, like just, oh, it's good I guess, just a bit over mediocre. It's more like, this is actually a really fun platformer, it has a lot of replay value, but if you want to get 100% completion, be ready to have your hair pulled out, you'll probably go bald from all the hair you'll be pulling out. Believe you me. See, this is really where this game starts to get hard, because remember, there's only three worlds, that's only, there's 32 levels in the entire game. Think about it, you're already at like, let's, you're already at 10, so, think about it. people are already starting to get past halfway and wondering, where the heck's the difficulty? Why is this game so damn easy? And believe you me. The many times you replay this level, the better you'll get at this one. But there's like no, like... The only thing you get for the getting all the gems, and if you saw it earlier, I got a gem for Hogwild because I hit all the boxes, because that's the easiest one to do. I'm kind of too lazy to do the other ones. It's not really something I'd want to go for. So. In conclusion... Crash Bandicoot, definite recommendation. And if you don't want to track down a copy for the PS1, and if you don't want to track down a copy for the PlayStation 1, just go for, you know, the PS3. I'm playing this on the PS3 right now. Because I don't own an original PlayStation. If I want, it's only $5.99. And it's definitely worth every penny. And the camera angles sometimes just really get on your nerves. And I, well, I, I hope they fix that in the sequel. We'll find out sooner or later. Like, remember the fourth? Remember that part earlier in the review? How I showed you how we were going to be. going through like some levels and describing throughout the game. This is this is where the fourth stage gets taken to the next level truly. You will die over and over and over. That's just like shit 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 shit. So I think that we'll be able to call this a review, and do I make it to the end? No, I don't. So I will see you guys later. Toodles.